happen to net neutrality. Only, it will likely result in one of two things. Either higher costs to the consumer or less innovation due to fairness. If, if, if a business cannot create new revenue streams when it comes to how it's going to manage its data, why would they invest a ton of money into it? Hint, they won't. But, but, but Jason, the FCC is in charge, not the White House. And the FCC is a separate entity. It, it doesn't take direction from Washington and especially not the White House, right? <laughs> well, a couple of things. The chairman of the FCC is Tom Wheeler. But, Who appoints the chairman of the FCC? The president does. Of course, the Senate has to confirm him, and the president does. And Tom Wheeler was appointed in 2013. But again, who had the majority of the Senate at that time? Yeah, just saying. Well, if you followed any sort of pattern with this president, most presidents, but especially this guy, the pattern is, Guys who have either done favors for or will do favors for Obama get appointed to positions. That's kind of how it works. Well, let me tell you a little bit about our friend Tom Wheeler. Because Tom Wheeler was the former head of the National Cable and Telecommunications Association. A Washington lobbying group for the cable companies. That's weird. You know, you know money in exchange for political and, and votes type of thing. Yeah. Kind of what lobbying is all about. So, serving as the head of the NCTA when Reagan was in office. So, why are you freaking out about it, Jason? Oh, Jason's getting ticked off that a lobby lobbying guy was was there when Reagan was there. What's the big deal, right? Well, <laughs> true. But then after that, he uh, was part of the Cellular Telecommunications and Internet Association from 2002 to 2004. And guess what? He was such an awesome guy that he was inducted into the Wireless Hall of Fame in 2003 and then in 2009 was elected into the Cable Television Hall of Fame. He's the only member to be elected into both and the reason being is he is considered one of the most influential men in the cable and television and cellular industry. I mean, they love him for God's sake. But what makes Tom Wheeler really great is this. During Barack Obama's presidential campaign, yeah, Wheeler spent about six weeks in Iowa uh, helping his campaign efforts and raised $500,000 for him. You know. But other than that, he's a good guy. So let's recap. Let's think about this. Seriously. The FCC, who's running the show in regards to net neutrality, is run by a guy who was nominated into the Cable and Cellular Hall of Fame as a guy who had a tremendous impact on their industry because he lobbied Washington for political favors in exchange for cash. That same guy who was appointed by the president who helped raise half a million dollars in campaign for him in Iowa. That same president whose most frequent golfing partner is the CEO of the largest internet provider in the United States. The same CEO of a company that once paid Tom Wheeler to lobby on their behalf for sweetheart deals and consideration in Washington. But yet... Somehow this net neutrality thing is all about saving the little guy and keeping the internet quote unquote fair. Fair to for who exactly? You want another reason to be against net neutrality? You know, you hear all these these stories about China and how uh, YouTube's not available in China and many websites are not available in certain countries because the internet service providers in other parts of the world are fully regulated and the government signs off essentially on what you can see and not see. Well... Insert Mark Lloyd, FCC diversity czar, and you'll never guess who appointed him to his position. I'll give you one hint. See, Mark Lloyd's all about, and there are plenty of quotes, by the way, in audio to prove this. He's all about government's role in the media. He worked as a reporter on NBC and CNN, and after that worked for the Center of American Progress and... You know, the independent, nonpartisan, educational institute dedicated to improving the lives of Americans through progressive ideas and action, but they're totally nonpartisan. That's true. Progressives are on the left and on the right. He's one of them. This is a guy who praised Hugo Chavez and the great revolution there and credited his rise to power and real social change because of his essential seizure of the media. 
Real socialism took place when he in Venezuela decided he was going to own the media and could pick and choose what it is that people can see and not see, hear and not hear, read and not read. Isn't that sweet? This is what Mark Lloyd said in 2005 in regards to what he sees the future of media being. We need a media responsible to promote democratic dialogue. We need media independent of corporations. If we really want news that we can trust, we must create a structure that makes it possible. And we must pay for it. One way to do this is to require commercial media to pay full fare for their access to public resources and use that money to fully support public service media in the United States. So Mark Lloyd wants commercial private radio stations that aren't diverse enough to pay a fee to public broadcasters, which again goes along with the previous comment. So offering different opinions on your broadcast or pay fines. That's simple. So every show, I guess, needs to be Hannity and Combs. That's how it needs to work. If the FCC can regulate how the internet works, it can dictate how it works. Imagine Googling State of the Union 2015. And the first result I get is uh, an MSNBC article saying how awesome the president is and praising him. And then there's a mandatory article giving you the opposition viewpoint from uh, NPR. Well, we all know that NPR is hardly nonpartisan or independent. I mean, they're slightly less left than MSNBC. In other words, let's play this idea out. The question would be, who decides who the counterpoint is? When the pipeline is no longer a pipeline influenced by a corporation and is now influenced by the government, what roads are now no longer accessible? And this would be just the start. The FCC is saying that they're only wanting this to be fair and free from corporate greed and manipulation. And while I don't want that, I also don't want to support a system in which the FCC, which is controlled by the White House, who is controlled by lobbyists like Comcast, are all in bed together. Because in the end... The only one who loses is us. Want to know why China doesn't allow YouTube? Because access to YouTube allows the Chinese to see the world outside of their bubble. The government doesn't want you to look outside of that bubble. So you can't see it. The internet was invented by Al Gore, as we know. But the innovation and the amazing capabilities of what we have in 20 years was not because of government regulation and involvement. It was because it was absent from it. Let me ask you something. Do you let the guy who did plastic surgery to Kenny Rogers touch your face? No. Why? Have you seen Kenny Rogers' face? No, thank you. Same situation here. The same people who said our healthcare system is broken because of the out-of-control costs of these bastard insurance companies. We need to fix the system because everyone has the right to health care. The same people who have fixed health care in America are now here to fix the internet? Ha! I don't think so. 405. He's the honey badger of internet radio. Oh, the honey badgers are just crazy. According to me. Ew, what's that? It's mouth, mouth, mouth. 